Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this project I am making a polymer clay and crystal fairy garden necklace. Here I have antique gold Primo Sculpey, the Primo FX, um, that I've rolled out on the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And I'm cutting enough, and I'm kind of like, you know, trimming up and stuff, but I'm cutting enough to go around the circumference of my crystal and I'm kind of just splicing two pieces together a little bit and using my finger to buff out that join line. And then using my tissue blade to trim off the excess. There are affiliate links to everything that I'm using or at least as close as I can find down in the video description below where you can purchase your own and that helps to support our company so I really appreciate that. Um, but you can also use just whatever you have on hand as well. Now here you can see I'm just kind of smushing it around the sides. I was all out of the liquid Sculpey. Otherwise I would have used that to help bind, um, bind this uh, clay border that I'm putting on to the stone. Um, and if you're using like Kato, you know, they've got a liquid thing too, I'm sure. But uh, it ended up being okay once it was baked, it bound really nicely. Now this is a quartz geode slice that I had actually gotten on clearance from Joann's ooh, like ages ago. <laughs> um, but again, you could use this on a variety of different crystal clusters or anything. I do like something that has a little bit of um, a, a natural framing to it, but I'm sure with the more irregular the piece, the more challenging it is creatively and kind of the cooler effect you'll get. Now here I'm using the Primo FX granite. You could also just as easily achieve this color by taking some white clay, putting in a little bit of black, and then putting in like some sand, you know, some gritty sand or something. I have a leaf cane that I've made. Um, in the past as well as some scrap browns blended together. I'm just uh, kind of uh, uh, Getting all of my little uh, tools and materials accumulating my magpies menagerie of <laughs> Bits and baubles and odds and ends that I'm going to be putting on this piece But and of course number one thing that I am not good at is staying in frame So please be patient with me. I've smushed up some of my scrap green and I'm fluffing the wires of my wire brush. It's a clay sculpting tool and I'm just poking the heck out of it. Pokey, 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 poke. And that's making a really nice moth, moss, moth, moss. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to take a needle tool and kind of pull off little bits of this texturized piece of polymer clay. Now here I'm actually using a porcupine quill. Um, I really like it because it has a little bit of flex to it. Um, and it's nice and long and lightweight, just, I don't know, I was given some polymer, or some uh, porcupine quills in the past, and I, I really loved the, just the feel of working with it, so, and I'm using just tearing off little strips, letting it tear kind of where it will to apply a little bit of moss, and I'm doing little pinched rocks of, well, rocks in quotations, of the gray granite clay. And see, this is where using some liquid clay really would have saved me some trouble, but I just didn't have any. Um, or at least I didn't know where it was at the time of recording. And I have this leather working tool that I use to texturize. And I'm going through with a ball-ended tool and just tapering out the edges of the leaf cane slice that I had made. Kind of taking it, smushing it nice and flat, getting it warmed up so it won't crack hopefully. And then I just kind of pinch and manipulate the end there to give the leaf a little bit of shape. And then using the porcupine quill again to give it a little bit of a fold. And then I'm just going to lay that and then use the ball tool to smush it down to the clay in, of the frame. Now since this is intended to be worn as a pendant, I didn't want anything poking out too much that would snag on clothing or break off or I mean because polymer clay is super glues together pretty pretty easily but I really didn't want to have to deal with that especially if a client purchases it purchases it from me it's like I don't want them to ever have to worry about their piece breaking you know it's that's no fun so just mushing on another piece I decided eh, I don't like that leaf so I'm using a different one <laughs> 
And again, doing most everything off screen just because that's how I roll. But um, I wanted it to look a little bit like just a fairy garden, maybe like the quartz crystal. Druzy was a starry night behind like a little forest scene there. I, I wasn't entirely certain what I had in mind whenever I was making this. I just knew I was in a bit of a mood. I was shooting this video prior to Dragon Con 2018 prep, which anybody who keeps up with um, what Randy and I are up to, y'all know that was a pretty stressful time for us. And just getting to sit down and make something that was still technically work because I was making it to sell out of the booth and it did sell like within like the first hour of the first day. And there's our neighbors. <laughs> but um, it was really nice to get something to, to sit down and do something artsy fartsy and just kind of enjoy myself, de-stress a little bit. So I'm using the end of a makeup brush actually uh, that I use for putting chalk pastels onto the polymer clay to make a little bit of a mushroom cap. And I'm just turning it around and pinching and shaping with just more of the gold clay. I'd really like to try making some with a nice red uh, with like the little white spots and stuff, but maybe in a future video. Be sure to leave a comment if you'd be interested in seeing that. So I'm just sitting that little guy right there, and now I have this other cap, but I wonder what am I going to do with it? It's been a minute. I think I just rolled it up <laughs> um, to make another cap out of. I really am sorry. I don't mean to go off camera so much, you guys. And so I'm just taking this one, cutting a little bit off the back to give him a flat side, and then using the ball tool. Again, I, I found I actually really liked the results I could get by using my tissue blade as a work surface because my fingers feel like they get in the way sometimes. So we've got that on there, setting it off to the side. And I'm using my tissue blade to make some stems. So I'm just slicing. the This antique gold mega shift clay has such an exceptional color contrast to it. I really love it. Like you can see how it adds just those little spiral elements and then instead of shaping down to make a point I just cut a point on it just cut in diagonal with my tissue blade and then smoosh 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 getting everything on there oh there I did have it okay <laughs> Sorry, this whole time I've been like, I don't have any liquid clay. Um, so yeah, you can see, I, was, it, I must have just found it right then. Uh, and that helps so much in binding things on there. And it's the clear liquid clay, or the translucent rather, so it's not horribly obvious, especially against this white toned crystal. And so we're just cutting another little stem. I really did have so much fun making this and I can't wait at the time of recording in a couple of weeks Randy and I are going down to um, Arkansas to some crystal mines that are down there and we're actually going to mine some of our own quartz crystal to use in our jewelry and fairy houses and all sorts of stuff so I'm very excited to get some pieces together to do hopefully more pieces of art like this and while I imagine a lot of the techniques will be the same um, though hopefully I do evolve as an artist, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, I love finding better ways of doing what I've been doing. Uh, so I'll probably have more videos like this coming for you guys of these little fairy gardens. And I just love like, I mean, cramming the moss on there. I had thought about using dried moss, but I really didn't think that that would hold up very well. But I am interested in trying to do a piece with a resin crystal because the crystals that we're going to get on our uh, whenever we go out hunting for them or mining for them, hopefully we'll find some nice ones. I'm sure we will. I mean, it's, I could go out into the driveway and poke around and find rocks that I'm in love with. So I, I think if we're at an actual crystal mine, I should be okay. But uh, I thought about making a silicone cast of a quartz crystal and then casting it out of resin because we could use all sorts of these glow-in-the-dark pigments and UV reactive stuff and shimmers and opalescent and really get some fantasy themed, you know, crystals going. And, uh, but you can't bake resin, at least the art resin and art and glow that I use 
is not good for baking. Like, that's not recommended. Uh, so I was gonna, like, use super glue and stuff and adhere on pieces of moss and, like, different things like that. Like, natural and found objects and already baked polymer clay. And then dip the whole piece in resin. So, sorry, that's neither here nor there. But, so now, um... We're talking attachments, and I didn't really think that through initially, so I'm like, ooh, maybe if I just, like, smush a ring on there, and then I was like, you know what? I have a better idea. And I found a bigger ring, <laughs> and I was like, off camera, um, I'll just use some of this extra gold clay that I have and smush it on there and use the ball tool to, like, round it and just really make a good, healthy contact there. Like, really trying to splice that in so that it feels once it's baked as one solid piece um and so that large ring I thought would make a really nice uh attachment point and just kind of I don't know it's very different from anything I've ever done before and I, that's what I wanted right then was to do something that I had never done before because I was like I'm kind of you know, anybody who's watching this who, you know, runs a booth or has a store or, you know, that like kind of, I think y'all might be able to empathize with me about the whole concept of manufacturing and mass producing handmade things. It's like you can only sell as much as you've made. So you got to make, 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 you know, prepping up for that big craft show or that big convention. And um, sometimes it's just like brain numbing. It's like, oh my gosh, I just want to make something that it's okay if I mess up on it. So this was my, it's okay to mess up on it piece. So I was like, try all the new things, but I didn't want to block up any of the holes on the back, the natural, um, occurrences in the jersey. And since I, I was like, well, I'm not very good at doing clean and tidy polymer clay work. So I was like, quick, smush all of it, <laughs> dimple, 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 <laughs> you know, just make it look like it's on purpose. Because, <laughs> I mean, really, if y'all didn't know that that was the plan the whole time, then, you know, most people wouldn't look at it and be like, she really had no idea what she was doing right there. <laughs> so, eh. <laughs> and then, looking at this, I wonder if I ever went and fixed that little leaf looks like it got folded over but I'm gonna go through now and just place in some moss some of the clay moss on top of my connection points again anything to just give it a little bit more reinforcement a little bit more I wanted it to look like the crystal just grew that way not that it was mechanically sculpted or you know that there was any kind of intent or design behind it I just wanted a nice messy natural I guess not messy so much as just natural and organic and possibly untouched you know by the hands of man kind of stuff even though it's completely touched <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> oh going back and watching this like I'm doing this voiceover oh a, a month a solid month after I had made it so uh, for those of y'all, you know, in the future watching this, that won't matter as much, but for those of y'all watching it the day that it's released or, you know, around that time, it has been a crazy, like, heck of a crazy month. So it's really cool to get to kind of watch back over where I was a month ago even. And um, it's really making me want to make more of these pieces. So <laughs> now I've made another cap, but I'm not cutting it in half. And I'm just smushing a little stem up inside of it and then I'm taking that and smushing that into our clay because um I was thinking like uh, Princess Mononeke whenever the spirits would like walk through the forest and little plants and everything would sprout up around them this was very in that vein of thinking I wanted it to just look like just life was just bursting out of this just a little fantasy fairy garden and so doing a little bit more clay and so now here I'm rolling out some of the brown blend because I felt like that was enough with um, the moss so I wanted to kind of make some vines and things and if you're making your own kind of piece like this you can use any colors like you could do flowers instead of mushrooms. You could have like a little fairy. I mean, it's don't ever feel like something might be silly or might be like, oh, well, I don't know if that'll work. Try it because you never know if it'll work. 
And so again, I'm just trying to make everything building up a few layers. Um, some people feel like less is more. I'm a more is more kind of person. <laughs> so I'm like, more little tendrils and messiness. Like, uh, I'm just kind of squishing it. <laughs> it wasn't working out the way that I wanted. And then also the blend that I'm using in that brown is a Sculpey 3 clay. Um, which is much softer. I would have preferred to use a Fimo or K no Fimo. Um, though Fimo would have worked. It takes a different baking temperature than Sculpey Three or Sculpey Primo. Sculpey Primo is what I had meant to say because it tends to be a little bit firmer. Um, but no, I really enjoyed getting to kind of just sculpt and fight with the clay a little bit, but it's fun. Because sometimes it'll do something on its own that I would have never thought to to sculpt or could have never sculpted. So hooray for happy accidents. Now also, you do have the option of using an extruder if you wanted a bunch of like uh, tendrils or little vines and stuff instead of hand rolling all of them. There's some different extruder caps on the market that have some really cool like, like you like push it and like you know, 10 or 12 little snakes of clay extrude out, and those that have been really handy. But I like the just methodical, you know, just rolling it out, doing my thing. Keep rolling, 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 keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> but yeah, just working on doing those little little swirlies coming up around the other side and just kind of tapping them on and then edging and framing around now also I have this piece in like this video is two times its original speed so um it really originally took me about 40 minutes to sculpt this piece, which I personally feel like is pretty quick, but um, I would have kind of liked to have spent longer on it just to see what I might have been able to accomplish. And so now I'm going through and chopping up little bits of brown clay to, and then rolling them into little balls and then smushing them onto with the help of some liquid clay. Really wish I'd found that sooner. It would have made life a little bit easier. But keep it in mind for next time. Um, so yeah, just rolling some little balls of uh, clay. And then placing them and just kind of patting them in. And that way, just, I don't know, a stacked stone effect a little bit. I really liked just how it framed it. Because I'm currently on a mandala drawing kick drawing click blah 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 <laughs> I've been drawing a lot and um, I really like mandalas and I've been you know, watching a lot of people's work and just getting super inspired by that so I'm thinking if there were a way that I could incorporate little vining mushroom fairy gardens into a mandala drawing so for uh, anybody who might be interested in seeing that um, be sure to check me out on Patreon, as well as Instagram and Facebook, because I post all kinds of different behind-the-scenes stuff onto uh, my social media, but also I post quite a bit of behind-the-scenes exclusive to Patreon. So that's how it ended up coming out. I baked it at 275 for 45 minutes and made a nice little gemstone necklace for it. So if y'all have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I, I do love hearing from you guys. Um, if you would like to support my work as well as see those behind the scenes content, get free drawing pages for my upcoming coloring book that has been requested for me to put out. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and then check me out over on Patreon. And then also uh, you can tag me in my different social media. So like Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I don't know if you can tag me on DeviantArt. But anyways, I, if you make something and you want me to see it, be sure to tag me in it. That way I can see it and, you know, kind of know what you're up to. Because y'all inspire me every day with your boundless creativity and your kindness and just everything. So please keep being awesome. And I will see y'all in the next video. So happy crafting. Bye.